All right, welcome to the Chapter 7 Commentary. My name is Connor Pickens. I'm the director of this episode. I am Kiersey Burkhart, and I'm a co-writer on this episode. Hey guys, my name is Miles Luna. I was one of the co-writers on this episode as well. Hi, I'm Eddie Rivas. I also was a co-writer on this episode. Uh, and I'm Carrie Shawcross. Uh, I've got a little fun uh, commentary trivia for you all. Uh, due to the kind of uh, weird nature of this recording, uh, we're recording these episodes out of order uh, to best suit every uh, schedule, and this is the last one we're doing, so Come get loose. prepared for an, <laughs> an interesting energy. energy, I think I is what I will say. I would describe the tone of, well, obviously this is a very serious, very somber, very introspective episode. Yes. Our energy is manic. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so... I'm going to turn it over, uh, Connor, what was, hey, wow, yeah. <laughs> what was this episode like for you? Hey, Connor, what happened in this episode? <laughs> I, well, I'm going to turn this back around and ask any of you guys if you remember the title of this episode, because I don't know. No, I don't. Know. I straight up don't. I'm so uh, tired. Do. It's a worst case scenario. Worst case yeah. scenario. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Just yeah, like this commentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, unlike, unlike Miles, I did watch this episode before this. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I'm recording and, this episode uh, after eight hours of working outside. I'm barely here. <laughs> so uh, I just noticed for the first time that Connor, are you are you the uh, announcer on the TV in the beginning of this episode? Is that you? Uh, I'm one of the characters. I could be the one on the TV. <laughs> I, I don't know. I there's like four different like, ones. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's either the guard or that. I love that little sequence though because we get to see we get to see the happy huntresses like in their element pulling yeah. a cool heist. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun yeah. fact, Fiona's semblance uh, was originally going to be torture semblance. We called it Deep yeah. Pockets, and we were going to give it to him because he was a thief. But we never found a, like, it just ended up we never really had a use for him to use his semblance. It never really presented, there was never like a moment where we were like, oh, this is when we unveil it. So then we were like, actually, torture could be a great example of how some people just don't unlock their semblances, and we'll just hold mm -hmm. that idea from someone else. And it made sense that one of uh, Robin Hood's Merry Men, or in this case, one of Robin Hill's Happy Huntresses, has deep pockets. We we put the idea of deep pockets in our deep pocket and held on to it, <laughs> held on yes. to it for a while. Um, I'm a big fan of. So I, I feel like I'm going to be the dork always saying like originally this scene was <laughs> all over the commentary, <laughs> but um, you mean the good one doing commentary? <laughs> so some of some of the stuff in this scene was originally meant for chapter four, like the very first draft of chapter four where they knew that. They found out earlier in our earlier outlines that uh, Tyrion was involved with this, and we were mm -hmm. able to reappropriate it for some of this scene. Um, I like it happening much more, like in this area of the season. But I don't know. I like the way we ended up. We're having, we basically have what, like three scenes in Ironwood's office as they play out: chapter two, seven, and eleven. Um, mm -hmm. And I just yeah. like the the way everything kind of falls apart gradually across each of those three. Yeah, I mean, I feel like nerves are getting frayed more and seeing, I don't know if the Nora blowing up at Ironwood stuff was originally in four, but it makes a lot more sense. To <laughs> yeah. I was something, I just really wanted to give Nora some, some bite in this season, so For sure. that was that was a moment that I, I got to write. It was really exciting. Oh, I got, I got to write uh, Tyrion Callow, that thing that's on screen for like three seconds. <laughs> I spent like an hour writing that one afternoon. It was one of my favorite things that I got to write, and it's <laughs> Only there for like you a, did that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was super fun because I've had I've had my head cannon of uh, when uh, when Salem first contacted Tyrion and getting to like just kind of slip it in this quick little thing. Have have fun and read that if y'all want. It's it's yeah. a fun little story. I right? didn't I know you did it until it. really late, and then I was like, well, I'm the brand archivist. I gotta know these things. And I remember <laughs> seeing it like in the final episode. It was like, wait, who wrote that? Like, what is that approved? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> The a fun story about that uh, and why I suck sometimes, that was on my to-do list to do for about like a week and a half. <laughs> and then finally Miles was like, yeah, I think I might take off early for the day. I was like, hey, sit down. Okay, you're like, hey, you know, like, you saw I was stressed. I was like, hey, is there anything I can do to help? I was like, you want to write this thing for Tyrion? And you're like, yeah. I was like, cool. Yeah, I fucking do. Yeah. I, want, I like that little beat there where we see uh, Crow kind of react to Clover's willingness to go along with this plan to mm -hmm. arrest uh, Robin. It's kind of nice to see the distance, the hints of distance growing between them. 
we, uh, I think that, we that's the scene as a whole, I feel like, is, mm-hmm. is this, you know, it's kind of this touch point in the middle of the season of, you know, we started the season a little shaky, and then over, you know, the course of it, we've been building this trust, and this is kind of this, like, wavering moment of, like, is it all still there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That last moment on Ren 2 was, there was several different versions of this kind of end to that scene, and uh, ultimately there was one that went on a little longer, had a little more dialogue, and kind of Ren got more into why he was feeling the way he was feeling, but ultimately we, we kind of chose to push that off to later in the volume, understanding that we were going to continue Ren's story arc in the next volume, and instead of being like, hey, we just had this huge information dump, now let's also have a feelings dump. It was like, no, let's, we, God knows we have no time for that in this episode. But speaking wanna, of feelings dumps, hey, this seems great. I want to give a shout out to, to Connor here. I mentioned this in the chapter five, that um, every now and then, you know, you'll have a director have an idea for something, and um, Connor, there was originally, like, they actually more specifically talked about Adam here. Um, and Connor came with some kind of write-up and notes and recommendations for, like, being able to talk about Adam without talking about him. Um, mm. And I think it works much better uh, yeah, than how it was originally written. We had a few moments like that where we were, you know, there's, a, there's also the conversation uh, in the episode prior to this one of, like, people talking about something, but also talking about something else. It, it's just mm-hmm. fun. It's, it's fun getting to do a little more of that this, this far. Are you talking about the uh, Nora Ren stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a secret, Miles. It's out. <laughs> you can watch it. God, this, I don't know. This scene, it's, it's, it's so sad, but it's so wholesome. Like, the, each of these characters getting to have this moment with someone else where, like, wow, you get me, and I feel like you know where I'm coming from. Originally, uh, there was a, um, there's an arm. Oh, no, I think we do still have the arm powder on the shoulder, right, in this episode? God. Yeah, that was the ground. Yeah, it was during the... There was, there, originally, uh, originally Pietro's office, there was a lot more, like, the robot arm was almost more of a character akin to, like, Tony Stark's arm thing, and then it was like, eh, hey, we'll throw it in a few times. But... <laughs> what was it supposed to be doing? <laughs> Like, just, like, throwing football around. Dog, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so tired. I should just stop talking. Someone else should talk about this scene. Originally, it was, like, a, it was making, like, fancy martinis. Oh, um, <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, it's what's-her-name. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was, can I say, like, it was such a bummer. Like, this was, we, and we've talked about this on panels and stuff before. Um, I know one of the criticisms of this volume, uh, which I think is valid, is like the characters, a lot of our main characters didn't have as much just like downtime to interact and chill with one another, like Ruby and Weiss hardly talk this volume. Um, and that was something we were definitely aware of and it was kind of a bummer, but like there, there's so much stuff going on and so many things and so many boxes we needed to check um, in order to keep everything on, on track. Uh, but honestly, the one that the person I missed the most this volume was Maria. Like we yeah. were trying to find any opportunity to have her around because she's such a great character and she's so much fun anytime she's on screen. There would always be someone like we'd be outlining and we'd think we'd have everything figured out, and there would be some annoying person that would be like, "Hey guys, what about like Maria?" And <laughs> they're like, "What is she doing right now?" And they're like, "Oh shit, what is she doing?" She's pick yeah. up the whole season and tear it apart. <laughs> Oh, Pietro. Yeah. Emo- emotional Pietro gets me every time. Yeah, he's so sad. It was good to finally have this this moment on screen, because I remember when Penny first came back, there were, there was a concern, and we knew it would be there, about, like, is this kind of, like, making, like, her return not have any, like, stakes or consequences attached right. to it? And so it was nice oh. knowing that this scene was coming. Um, yeah. To say that it there was a cost. It. Right, and puts a finite limit on it and kind of shows yeah. that there's, yeah, it's not a ultimately indefinitely renewable. I felt really dumb uh, when I wrote the scene. I was like, ooh, it'll be really cool. We'll have him pick up a picture and his thumb will just be covering Watts' face and it'll be a big reveal at the end. I completely forgot that we did that in, like, volume three or whatever with the picture of Raven. I thought it was being so clever. It's like, like jackass, you did this already. <laughs> Someone, someone pointed out, ideas. it was like, oh, I love this callback to volume three. And I'm like, yes, yes, a callback. Yeah, that <laughs> is what you're is. just supposed to own it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, a clock's, you, you know what they say, a clock's right twice a day, so you can do anything twice. <laughs> no, no, you, no, a broken clock's That's right what twice saying. a day. A, a clock should right be right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I, I don't use a normal watch anymore. <laughs> I'm all digital, baby. You, you know what they say about clocks? They time. Yeah. Well. Also, that's not Cinder's mom. 
<laughs> oh, he, he's a <laughs> thinker. I saw, I saw at least one theory that that might have been like oh, related to Cinder. I, I I can see it. I'm just why rule hey, it out? Why rule it out, Carrie? Debunking you know? with <laughs> Carrie. Cause, cause we do, we do a thing a lot of times where it's like we'll reuse like similar hair models and stuff like anything yeah. that we can do to try and keep the budget down and like just and, you know keep production on schedule, and what that means is sometimes you have characters that look kind of similar and then it leads to theories like oh that's someone's grandma that's definitely it's someone's all mom. the moms got murdered in episode all six all the moms hang out and now all yeah. those kids at the beginning of seven are orphans oh I forgot about <laughs> that well it's funny I remember this, and this is again kind of dating this but like. uh Final Fantasy, 15, uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake came out kind of recently, and people were a little frustrated that, like, it looked like uh, Cloud's head model was kind of similar to Noctis's from 15, I think. Mm. And it was like, all of our character models basically start from the same base. Like, it's we have a base character, mm -hmm. and then we, we change it from there, and that's why they don't look all the same. But it's like, yeah, you know, we have to reuse assets, that's the point, but that doesn't make it a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just starting from... So one thing about this scene is that, um, again, me being my redundant self, this was a late <laughs> edition <laughs> in the outline, um, where originally we didn't have this whole storyline about um, Amity taking supplies that Mantle needed. Um, and so having being able to add that in and then give Blake and Yang a moment where they make a decision to, to do something and maybe not tell other people the truth um, worked out. I, felt like really well and was able to put Robin's semblance on screen a little bit sooner. But then mm -hmm. it, it basically gave every member of Team Ruby kind of a different moment because Ruby had her moment with the Ironwood. Weiss has her moment where she doesn't quite tell Winter the truth in Chapter 5. Um, and, and I like that it was able to Yang do that. also this dope pun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was great to get another Yang pun back in there. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> uh, Connor, I really like what you and the, uh, the concept and then like lighting team did with uh, the scene. Oh, yeah. Very moody. Yeah, I really like how this turned out. This is a concept by David Tilton uh, and Post Team, really, really, really nailed it. Uh, those God Rays. There was like, there's like a high angle shot at the beginning of the scene that wasn't originally in here, but it was like the <laughs> angle that I think Ariel uh, chose. She was just like testing the lighting out, and I saw it on her screen. I was like, "I'll be right back. I'm gonna go." <laughs> I I seriously just had that had something like that just happened for volume eight, where uh, I saw a concept for something. I was like, "Oh, I like that angle a lot." Okay, cool. Uh huh. Did you go tell them to follow their heart? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is our first time seeing this set. Yeah, another so one that beautiful. posted a great job. So good. Yeah. We try to t kind of strike this balance of, of being similar to the other vault, but you know, not being a direct copy. To we want a pattern, but not a not them to be the same. It's distinctively Atlas, and it's badassness. Yeah. yeah, it was fun doing this scene after that previous one because that previous one's very locked off. Like a lot of the cameras are very static, uh, and this one we just want to basically always be moving and kind of feel, you know, make it just have give it like a weird feeling when you're in this mm -hmm. room. Uh, that kind of like leads because you have to create the conditions for Ironwood to kind of open up to Oscar here, which is something yeah. he probably wouldn't do in his normal frame of mind. But something about the setting, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just strange enough that he'll. Yeah, be anytime I'm in a, a large room, uh, mm -hmm. I open up to whoever's in there. Yeah. And it, you can definitely you can feel how badly he wants guidance from Oz. You can yeah, right. just feel how badly he wants to like. If he could just say the right thing or take him to the right place, just pull him out. Um, I feel like you can, you know, Ironwood is having this rare moment of vulnerability that honestly, if if he allowed himself to be more vulnerable more often, I feel like things would have gone very differently. We have to stop I feel like you could just see a moment of him being like, no, you're not Oz. Yeah. You're awesome. Right. I don't well, is he like he opens up for a beat and then Oscar presses his luck and he kind of hardens mm -hmm. again? This guy. Yeah, no. This scene is like one of my favorite types of things to do. We did this a lot in like Nomad of Nowhere, where you're able to layer in exposition, but like with character. Um, and like it feels really natural for Ironwood to be giving this information that he gives kind of about the relic and about Atlas. Uh, because it's all in that, like, appealing to hoping Oz is there for him. Mm -hmm. This was this was a really tricky scene, too, because a lot of times um, our kind of, like, guide is um, a good scene is doing two things, two things at the same time, um, and we kind of apply that to lines as well, just because we have, you know, the runtime that we have. 
um, but this volume, because we had so many things going on, this scene is accomplishing like five things yes. at the same time. We were getting information <laughs> about like these two characters' mental state, rules of the relic, um, the flashback to Ironwood and setting up the chess piece for later. Like this scene had so much work to do and, and everybody- Oscar and Oz that. are slowly merging and Oscar's yes. not super pleased about it. Right. Yeah, the scene is doing a lot of things at the same time and it's, I feel like you don't really notice it if you're not looking for it or you're watching it the first time, which I think is, works really yeah. well for it. Like, you definitely identify, it's like, oh, we're getting some, like, exposition here, it's a little bit of info, like, it's a talky scene for sure, but you don't realize just how much, like, we really, like, hid your vitamins in this bite of dessert. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this, this is a surprisingly talky episode, but doesn't seem like it. Like, mm -hmm. on paper it is, but once you watch it, it's not at all. I remember being really worried about this ending for a long time, about like, we, we is this so gonna be times. suspenseful or exciting? Like, dun dun dun, a in dinner, dinner, dinner. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, But see, that's, what that's why you don't know. Conference once upon yeah, time, originally we had like a bajillion news, news conferences. We were like, no, we have to, we have to kill 24 hour news, send a letter. But see, that's the thing, right? Here's why it's suspenseful. suspenseful. They're like, we're going to have shellfish. And Ironwood's like, I'm allergic to shellfish. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. 